Sacred geometry is the blueprint of creation and the genesis of all form. It is an ancient science that explores and explains the energy patterns that create and unify all things and reveals the precise way that energy of creation organizes itself. On every scale, every natural pattern of growth or movement conforms inevitably to one or more geometric shapes. As you enter the world of sacred geometry, you begin to see as never before the wonderfully patterned beauty of creation. Sacred geometry is defined as opening the heart and mind to conscious evolution through geometric models. It is the study of geometric forms and the metaphorical relationships to transitions of mind, emotions, and spirit. The transition of the human spirit can be seen in the transition of one geometric form to another through its own evolvement, moving into higher and higher patterns. This is the way of the heart as well. The spiral is the most obvious symbol of this evolution of consciousness. Sacred geometric forms are not stagnant. They are in constant flux, evolving and evolving from one geometric form to another at their own speed or vibratory frequency. We can, through observing and studying sacred geometric form, tune ourselves into that vibration and resonate with that frequency of the sacred geometry to cause insights and revelations within our own four body systems in sacred harmony. That is why certain sacred geometric forms call out to us from an indefinable place within our own being. We are resonating with that geometry, and it is bringing balance and upliftment as we harmonize with it. The ancients believed that the experience of sacred geometry was essential to the education of the soul. They knew that these patterns and codes are symbolic of our own inner realm and the subtle structure of awareness. To them, the sacred had particular significance involving consciousness and the profound mystery of awareness, the ultimate sacred wonder. Sacred geometry takes on a whole other level of significance when grounded in the experience of self-awareness. The molecules of our DNA, the cornea of our eyes, snowflakes, pine cones, flower petals, diamond crystals, the branching of the trees, a nautilus shell, the stars we spin around, the galaxy we spiral within, the air we breathe, and all life forms as we know them emerge out of timeless geometric codes. Viewing and contemplating these codes allow us to gaze directly at the lines on the face of deep wisdom and offer a glimpse to the inner workings of the universal mind and the universe itself. Trambala Melchizedek maintains that sacred geometry started when spirit made its first projection into the void and created the first octahedron around itself. The void is infinite, nothing in it, and these forms being created are also nothing, they're just imaginary lines created out of consciousness. This gives you an idea of what reality is, nothing. The Hindus call reality maya, which means illusion. Spirit can sit in the middle of its creation for a long time, but eventually it will make a decision to do something. To recreate the process, mystery school students were given special instructions to reenact the same motions that spirit took. These two simple instructions are all that's required to complete and create everything in the entire universe. Remember that spirit is now sitting in a sphere. The instructions are to move that which is newly created, then project another sphere exactly like the first. That does something very special and unique. This is an absolutely foolproof system for creating reality. You cannot make a mistake no matter what you do. All you do is move that which is newly created and project another sphere the same size as the first one. In this system, since nothing exists except the bubble and the void, and inside the bubble is the same as the outside, the only thing that's new or different is the membrane itself, the surface of the sphere. So consciousness decides to go to the surface. It makes no difference whether it goes on the surface or it can go anywhere. It doesn't make any difference how it gets there either. Whether it goes in a straight line or in curves or spirals or explores out and seeks through space in between, it can be really creative, it doesn't make any difference. But somehow or another it will end up on the surface of the sphere. For purposes of this example, we'll say that spirit went up to the top, just to be symmetrical and easier to deal with. Anyway, spirit, the single little eye, lands on the surface. It has just made the first motion in Genesis. And the spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And the very next thing was, God said, let there be light, and there was light. At this point, spirit no only knows how to do one thing, actually, it knows how to do two things, but the end result is one. It knows, one, how to project the little octahedron and create a sphere. Two, how to move to what's newly created. That's, that's it. Very simple reality.
So once it arrives on the surface, it makes another octahedron, spins it around on three axes, and forms another sphere identical to the size of the first one. It's identical in size because its ability to project into the void is the same. Nothing has changed in that respect, so it creates a second sphere exactly the same size as the first. When it does that, it has done something in terms of sacred geometry is very special. It has formed a vesica Pisces at the intersection of the two spheres. Have you ever seen two soap bubbles sticking together? When two soap bubbles intersect, a line or circle goes around their linkage. If you are looking at the two bubbles from the side, the newly formed section would look like a line. But if you are looking down at the bubbles from on the top, you would see a newly created form circumference inside the larger spheres. The vesica Pisces circumference is symmetrical to, and smaller than, the circumference of the larger spheres. In other words, it would appear from the side like a straight line, and from the top like a circle. Even though the vesica Pisces is usually a two-dimensional like a coin, its three-dimensional aspect is just as valid. If you were to take it out of the middle of the two spheres, it would look similar to a football. I cannot prove this to you right now, but later in the book I'll be able to prove the image is light. It's the geometric image through which light is created. It's the geometric image through which your eyes were created, which receive light. Besides light, it's also the image of patterns that are connected to your emotions and many, many other aspects of life. This is the basic geometry of the electromagnetic field. It's too simple to understand here. I have to wait until things get more complex, then I can explain it. I'll show you the first notion of Genesis creates the pattern that is light. That's why God said, let there be light. He couldn't say that until he projected the second sphere and made the Vesica Pisces. When spirit is in the center of the second sphere and looking down at the Vesica Pisces, it's looking upon the newly formed circle, the circle of the Vesica Pisces. This circle is the only thing that's new, and the spirit's instructions are to go on to what's newly created. It doesn't make any difference whether it goes on the new circle. It cannot make a mistake. It just moves to somewhere on that circle and projects a new sphere. No matter where spirit lands, we can rotate the sphere to look like this drawing. In every motion of Genesis, vast amounts of knowledge came out. The first creation produced the sphere. The first motion day produced the Vesica Pisces, which is the basis of life. The second motion day produced in interpreting the relationship between the three spheres, the basic geometries of the star tetrahedron, which you will soon see is one of the most important shapes for life. We're not going to get into all the information that was formed at this time, but each time a new sphere was formed, more and more information unfolds and more and more creative patterns become visible. After the first and second motions have taken place, from anywhere on the sphere to anywhere on the circle, no matter how sphere it moved, no matter where it went on the circular sphere, it will always be perfect. It will begin to move exactly on the equator of the original sphere. There are an infinite number of equators on that sphere, but it will choose the perfect one. After that pattern is created, there's only one instruction left to follow, forever. The only other action to be taken until the end of time is always to move the innermost circle point and project another sphere. For the sake of clarity, let's define what we mean by the innermost circle point. In this case, there are three innermost circle points. If your eye was to trace the outside perimeter of this pattern, it would come to three places, that are closest, they're at the closest places to the center. It is the closest places to center that we are calling the innermost circle point. In the case of the Genesis pattern, that is the movement the spirit is creating, there are six innermost circle points. So with this in mind, spirit starts moving exactly around the equator of the original or central sphere. When, when it is traversed the full 300